What is going on everybody? Today I will be responding to your guys college football hot takes. We do this video just about every week and it is one of my favorite videos to make because I love interacting with other college football fans. So if you guys want to be a part of this video then just look out for my YouTube community post asking for your guys hot takes because you guys can leave your hot takes there. Today is going to be a shorter video but regardless I'm excited to read these hot takes. But before we get into reading these hot takes as always let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football then you will love this channel. Because we upload a ton of college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing. And also consider joining my discord server down in the description below. But without further ado, let's read some hot takes. This first person says Oklahoma goes 7 and 5. Their schedule is very hard and I think it will be a tough transition into the SEC early on. I could see this happening. And not necessarily because Oklahoma is a bad team. I think Oklahoma has a lot of potential with Brent Venables as head coach. And Jackson Arnold is a five-star quarterback with a lot of potential. The defense is also trending up and it should be really solid in the SEC. Brent Venables continues to recruit at a high level. But Oklahoma will now be playing against very tough competition. And next season they have a gauntlet of a schedule playing on the road against LSU, Missouri, and Ole Miss. While also having games against Alabama, Texas, and Tennessee. And don't forget they have a sneaky game on the road against an Auburn team that has potential and they play a solid Tulane team. They play six teams that are top 20 teams and they really face a gauntlet of a schedule. Oklahoma lost a lot of talent on offense last season. They lost a lot of their offensive line and losing Dylan Gabriel will hurt. But I still do expect Oklahoma to be a top 25 team and they have potential to surprise a lot of people if Jackson Arnold steps up right away and becomes a top quarterback in the SEC. But 7-5 is definitely a possibility. And year one for Oklahoma could be a tough first season for this team in the SEC. But I do think Oklahoma should adapt to SEC football. And I think in 2025 or 2026, we could see Oklahoma potentially in the SEC title race. Because I trust the trend with this team. And I trust Brent Venables as head coach. But I do think next season will be a year of adapting for Oklahoma. And I don't expect them to win a bunch of games. So I do agree with you on this one. And I could see them going 7-5. and five. But I don't think they will be much worse than 7-5 and five, and they should be a top 25 team. This next person says, A couple of kids at my school love Michigan State and they think they'll be a solid bowl team. So my hot take is that they will go 5-7 and seven with their only good wins being against Iowa and Rutgers if you think Rutgers is good. And I think Jonathan Smith will struggle in his first year. But not his fault though since Michigan State already sucks. I actually think Iowa and Rutgers are pretty solid Big Ten teams and I don't think Michigan State will beat both of those teams. But if you look at the schedule, I honestly see a path for bowl eligibility even if they don't beat Rutgers and Iowa. Because Michigan State plays in FCS school, FAU, Boston College, Indiana, Illinois, and Purdue. I could see them winning 4 or 5 of those games. And if you think Michigan State can beat Rutgers and Iowa, then in that case Michigan State will likely be a bowl eligible team. I don't think it's going to be an easy path for Michigan State to make a bowl game because of how bad they were last season. But they do have a lot of winnable games on that schedule. And I like the pickup of Jonathan Smith, that head coach. Aiden Childs also has potential at quarterback. And he is a highly rated player in the transfer portal. I think that Michigan State could be in that bowl game conversation. But they might not have what it takes to win six games quite yet, even with the easier schedule. So I could see them going 5-7 and seven or even 4-8. and eight. I do still have to predict their schedule, so we will see how many games I'll have them winning by then. But there's definitely a path to bowl eligibility. But bowl eligibility would probably be their ceiling. This next person says, For the foreseeable future, no team outside the SEC, Big Ten, and maybe Notre Dame wins the Natty. If I'm looking at the landscape of college football, the only teams outside of the Big Ten and SEC that I could see realistically winning a national championship is Florida State and Notre Dame. But even the odds of those two teams are unlikely. And if we're going to look towards the future, there's one team that is a big dark horse to win the national championship from the ACC. And people may laugh at this, but that team is Miami. And if Miami has a good season this year and has another dominant recruiting year, the talent on the roster is going to be up there with some of the best teams in college football. Talent-wise, Miami has potential within the next five years if they continue to recruit at a top five level. But a lot of people don't trust Mario Cristobal and that's why they are a big dark horse. But on the topic of Florida State, I really like Mike Novell from Florida State. And they actually had a legitimate shot at a national championship last season until Jordan Travis got hurt. And I know that Notre Dame is usually overhyped and overrated. But I think that Marcus Freeman has this team heading in the right direction. And next season is going to help us learn a lot more about Notre Dame. 
Because if Notre Dame has the same season as last season, then I'd step back on the idea of Notre Dame winning a natty, and I still kind of have to wait and see with this Notre Dame team. But I don't think I would be surprised if Florida State won a national championship within the next five years, because let's not forget, they actually did it not too long ago. And I truly believe Mike Novell is one of the best coaches in college football. I kind of think Florida State is the new Clemson of the ACC. Not quite on the same level yet, but they have potential. But with all the conference realignment stuff going on, Florida State will likely not even be in the ACC for the next five seasons. And I don't know what's going to happen, so we will see. This next person says LSU won't be that good on offense. They are losing weapons like Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, and others. They won't make the 12-team playoffs. The offense looked pretty good without Jaden Daniels in last season's bowl game against Wisconsin. Garrett Neusmeyer is going to be even better next season because he will have a full offseason being that number one guy. The dude can sling the ball as he proved when he threw for just under 400 yards and three touchdowns against Wisconsin in their bowl game. The offense may not be as good as it was last season, but I believe the undeniable truth is that LSU will still have a pretty good offense and they will likely have a top offense in the SEC again. And let's not ignore the fact that they bring in one of the best receivers out of the transfer portal, CJ Daniels from Liberty, who had over a thousand receiving yards last season for a team that ran the ball much more than they passed the ball. They also bring in Xavion Thomas, who should be a solid receiver as well. They are also very deep on the roster. They have two capable running backs in Josh Williams and Caleb Jackson. They return two solid receivers in Chris Hilton and Kyron Lacey, and they return their starting tight end. We'll see how the offensive line shapes up, but this is going to be an exciting and very good offense again, and I have no doubt about that. But I could see them missing out on the 12-team playoffs because the SEC is stacked, and the defense is the big question mark for this team. But I will say, Blake Baker being your defensive coordinator is huge, and they have potential. So we will see where I have LSU when I am done with all my offseason predictions. This next person says, Kirk Ferentz needs to retire. The offense is going nowhere for Iowa, and they've been stuck in the middle forever. It's crazy to think that Kirk Ferentz has been the head coach for Iowa football for over the last 25 years, dating back all the way to 1999. And since 1999, he has had his ups and downs, but a majority of the time, he has led his team to either 8 or 9 win seasons, and even multiple double-digit win seasons. He has done a decent job at Iowa, but the college football landscape is changing, and it might be time for him to retire, because Iowa's offense really hasn't been going anywhere as of lately, and it's very bad. I wouldn't be surprised if he did retire soon because he has been coaching for a long time. And like I said, a new landscape of college football may just convince him to retire. We'll see how the offense looks next season, but it's not going to be a one-year turnaround for that Iowa offense. I'm going to read one more hot take for this video. And this last person says, Grayson McCall will either be considered the best or second best quarterback in the ACC after this upcoming season. And I am recording this before at NC State spring game today. And I have to say, I truly believe Grayson McCall is underrated, or at least underappreciated, and he's not being talked about enough. And I know it's only spring football, but people should keep an eye on him in today's game. This may be posted after NC State's spring game, but I'm definitely going to be watching that NC State team as a whole, because I think they are a very interesting team heading into 2024. And the offense has a lot of potential with Grayson McCall at quarterback, and some of the new additions through the transfer portal. I think the offense could be very good next season. And I don't know if Grayson McCall will be in that top two conversation, but the ACC is wide open even at the quarterback position. And I'm glad someone has given him more recognition. The ACC has some quarterbacks with potential, but also quarterbacks who still have a lot more to prove, like DJU, Cade Klubnik, and Kyle McCord, and even Cam Ward. I think Cam Ward is the more talented quarterback in the ACC right now, but there are really a lot of solid quarterbacks in the ACC, but no quarterbacks that really stand out other than Cam Ward. But even he still has a lot more to prove because he didn't really do much at Washington State record-wise. But I could see Grayson McCall at least being in that top 5 or top 3 conversation and he's pretty underrated in my opinion. But anyways, that is going to do it for today's hot takes. And I know this was a shorter video than usual. Usually my hot take videos are a bit longer. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video anyways. But let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you'll love this channel because we upload a ton of college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing and also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But that is going to do it, guys, and peace out.